calculus consists of these red and green spiders that interact in specific ways, some of which we've just seen in the previous talk. And um, in past years at QPL, I've generally talked about completeness results for the ZX calculus, uh, where we've shown that the rewrite rules for the calculus actually allow us to derive all equalities that we could also derive using matrices. And one of the specific of these completeness results was the one for the stabilizer ZX calculus, which again, in case you're not familiar with stabilizer quantum mechanics, I'm going to define in a little bit. Um, but so for the stabilizer ZX calculus, um, we have completeness, which means that our rewrite rules allow us to derive any equality that we could derive in matrices. So any problem that we might want to study within stabilizer quantum mechanics, we can study in the ZX calculus. And now um, my co-workers and I have thought about going the other way. So we know that our rule set is complete, but we didn't know whether we actually need all the rules that we have in order to show completeness. And in fact, as you might derive, um, deduce from the title, uh, we have been able to simplify the calculus somewhat and remove some of the rules. So our goal was to find a minimal rule set, so where provably all the rules that are left are necessary. Unfortunately, we haven't quite got to that point, but I think we have made some progress towards it, and that's what I'm going to tell you about now. So um, the idea of this talk is I'm first going to give some background, introduce the ZX calculus and stabilizer quantum mechanics, and then I'm going to kind of move towards this minimal result, which we can't, can't quite get to from two directions. So on the one side, we're simplifying the calculus by removing all the rules where we um, can show that they're actually derivable from the others. And then on the other hand, um, we kind of go from the other side and we show um, which rules we certainly can't remove. And as I said, the two processes don't quite meet in the middle, um, but I'm going to get to that. Right. Um, so as uh, in the previous talk, the ZX calculus consists of these um, two um, red and green spiders. Um, the green spiders um, being maps in the um, computational basis and the red spiders maps in the Hadamard basis. And we also have these two extra nodes, the Hadamards, which map between the two bases and then these star nodes, which are just numbers, they have no inputs or outputs. And now um, Ross, I'm afraid, is going to have to stand on his head because my diagrams go from the bottom to top. So um, uh, I'm using double square brackets to denote the map that goes from diagrams to matrices. So um, yeah, the green spiders. Uh, the green spiders are in the computational basis and my spiders are always phased, so they have these labels alpha attached, which give you a, a relative phase between the zeros and the ones. And then similarly, um, for the plus minus bases, um, Hadamard nodes are as expected, and then the stars are nodes that have just have the value one half. Uh, we can compose these things again in the way that we always do in process theory, so you've probably seen that multiple times before. So we can put two diagrams side by side that corresponds to just taking the tensor products of the corresponding matrices, and we can also um, link up inputs and outputs, which corresponds to taking the normal matrix product. Now, in the rest of my talk, I'm going to focus on stabilizer quantum mechanics, which is a um, part of quantum theory in which you're only allowed to do um, preparations and measurements in the computational basis, and additionally, the so-called Clifford unitaries, which um, consist of, um, are generated by this um, phase gate with phase I, um, the Hadamard, and the knot. And so, stabilizer quantum mechanics is a significantly less powerful part than general quantum theory. It is classically simulable, um, but it is nevertheless um, of much interest, it shows many quantum phenomena like quantum teleportation and non-locality, and it's of central interest in various parts of quantum theory like error correcting codes and measurement based quantum computation. So we're not just studying this because it's kind of convenient for the ZX calculus, it is actually an area um, that is of wide interest. In the ZX calculus, um, the stabilizer fragment is just the one where um, we allow the phase labels on our spiders to only be integer multiples of pi by two. So for the rest of this talk, um, in when I have of arbitrary labels in my diagrams, just assume they're always integer multiples of pi by two. And conversely, any diagram in which all, all the labels are integer multiples of pi by two corresponds to some stabilizer process. Right, uh, so these are the rewrite rules of this um, stabilizer ZX calculus, um, the way they existed so far, so um, they not all papers have used exactly the same set of rules and they've changed a little bit over the years, but these are the rules that um, were used, for example, for the completeness results that I presented in previous years. Um, so uh, I'm not going to go through all of them in very much detail, but the first one is the spider fusion rule, which um, uh, you should have seen multiple times so far. And then below it we have the bi-algebra rule, which played an important role in the previous talk. And then the um, Euler decomposition of the Hadamard, which was also mentioned previously. And then various other rules that come up. In addition to these explicit graphical rewrite rules, uh, we've also got a couple of meta rules or conventions. Uh, one of them uh, is the convention that only the topology of a diagram matters. 
So if we take the same components and connect them up in the same ways, then it doesn't matter how they're actually laid out in the plane. Um, it's always uh, the two diagrams are going to be um, have the same translation into matrices. And just as a um, kind of convention about the rules that we've given here, usually um, we've always assumed that in addition to all the explicitly stated rules, we can also um, use any of them upside down, and uh, we can also use any of the rules with the colors red and green swapped. So basically, um, each of these rules is kind of comes up to four versions, which makes quite a large number of rules. So um, that's why we uh, decided to look at how to simplify them. So as I said, I've previously mentioned the, the, this concept of completeness. So um, the um, stabilizer ZX calculus is complete, which means that any equality that we could derive using matrices or any other formalism um, that we like, uh, we can instead also derive using the graphical rewrite rules that given on the previous slide. And uh, what we're interested at in this um, work is how to um, simplify the set of rewrite rules, ideally towards a minimal one, um, without losing the completeness property. And as I've already said, unfortunately we've not quite managed to get to a minimal set, but we have managed to make some progress towards simplifying it. Which is what I'm going to talk about now. So first thing, um, we can actually simplify the notation of that So when I um, uh, proved the completeness result for the stabilizer ZX calculus where we're keeping track of scalars, I introduced this new node on the star node um, because I'd gotten slightly confused about what um, numbers we could actually represent with diagrams. So it turns out the standard is not in fact necessary because we have um, some diagram that consists only of spiders um, which has exactly the same interpretation. So anywhere uh, we, we use a star node, we can instead also use this other um, diagram um, and it's going to have exactly the same interpretation. And therefore we can just completely eliminate the star rule from our calculus um, if we just ex um, replace all the occurrences of that in the rewrite rules. And it only appears in this one rewrite rule um, called the scalar rule, and so uh, we replace that uh, with this other rule instead. But what I should have mentioned earlier, so um, this kind of uh, dashed um, square is basically the in this space intentionally left blank symbol. Uh, so um, uh, uh, the, the, this combination of a, um, a green spider with no legs and these other two um, constructions um, just corresponds to an empty diagram which represents the number one. So, as I said before, the, the, the star node has the value one half, um, so uh, you might, the other rule is the spider with no legs has the value two. Right, so um, now going back to the rewrite rules I showed before, I've, I've already implemented this one simplification, I've re um, replaced the star node uh, with this other diagram, and I'm now going to just go through this um, set of rules one by one, and basically um, tell you whether we can um, remove that rule or not. So um, I'm going backwards for some reason because that seems sensible given the way I've arranged them. So um, we're definitely um, we're going to keep this um, uh, inverse rule which I've already talked about quite a bit. Next to it, you can see this rule which has a um, uh, this node um, also with no legs but with a phase pi, and we have another rule um, in which this the same construct also appears. The the green node with phase pi um, actually has the value zero. Um, so uh, that shows us that these diagrams just correspond to the zero matrix. And um, so we currently have two different rules that deal with these zero matrices, but it turns out we don't actually need to. We only need um, the one up there, and we can remove the other one. Now, um, this uh, rule on the bottom left um, is the Euler decomposition of the Hadamard, and um, while we can't remove that, we can, in fact, simplify it slightly. So as you can see, it currently has these um, disconnected bits of diagram which represent numbers, uh, which are required because the decomposition of Hadamard in terms of phase um, shifts um, is actually only holds up to a scalar factor. And um, but if we uh, rewrite it slightly, um, we can get rid of all the scalars um, by basically uh, replacing this uh, this red uh, node with a phase pi by two by by this construction where we have a green phase pi by two clamped into the red node. And that's just going to make some later work slightly easier. Right. Uh, we're going to keep the other um, zero rewrite rule, which I've already mentioned. Uh, then the, the middle rule in the second row from the bottom um, is the so-called um, pi copy rule, um, because it copies the pi phase shifts, and that was actually in the calculus from the very beginning. Um, so it was quite surprising when we realized that actually it's not needed. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, and we can si sorry, uh, just to go back. Uh, so the zero rule we can simplify slightly. Um, this is just for neatness. It doesn't make much of a difference to anything. Um, so we. This is clearly sort of um, the new version follows from the old one, but we can also go back to the old version from this one. It just
just looks like a meter. <laughs> right, back to the, um, to the pi-copy rule. Uh, so um, we actually realized that that rule is not necessary in the calculus, uh, which hadn't been realized before, as far as I know, even though it was in the calculus from the beginning. Um, even more surprisingly, this rule, um, the pi commutation rule, um, at least within stabilizer quantum mechanics, also is not required. Uh, we've managed to derive that. Um, the proof of that is something that only works within stabilizer quantum mechanics. So, um, as you can see, uh, there's kind of some one arbitrary phase alpha in there, and our proof basically um, goes through and uh, we prove it bit by bit for each different value of alpha, um, which is only four different values in the stabilizer quantum mechanics. And so, um, within the stabilizer fragment, uh, this rule is not required. But once we go outside, we're probably going to have to put it back in. Um, in the next row, uh, we're going to keep all the rules, except uh, we're actually, for technical reasons, going to modify the bi-algebra rule slightly and express it like this instead. So we just uh, this is just plain with the scalars, and um, that's required to make some of our later proofs work out. Um, we're also going to, in the top row, we're going to keep this cap rule. Um, we can, in fact, get rid of the middle rule, which is um, the loop rule, which has sometimes been used in the calculus and sometimes it's been incorporated in the spider rule, uh, sorry, um, but yeah, uh, actually even if we express the spider rule like this with just one connecting uh, leg between the two spiders, we don't need the loop rule. So this is um, kind of just the set of rules where we can eliminate all the versions of them, and I'm just going to reorder them, sorry, oh yeah. Uh, um, Mary? Yeah? Does your, does your convention mean that the cap rule also holds for the red uh, Yes, yeah, so um, uh, it holds upside down and it also holds for the other color for the time being. I'm going to get back to that in a moment. Yeah, so just to show you that some of these proofs are in fact really not trivial, I'm not going to go through this in any detail, but as I said, for this um, uh, for this pi commutation rule, um, it is quite, the, the proof that it can be derived from the others is quite intricate, so first we need to derive various equalities between these uh, states with phase pi by 2 and uh, minus pi by 2 in the different colors. So those are just the y basis states expressed once in terms of the green spiders and once in terms of the red spiders, but the equalities only hold up to a complex phase. And then once we've got those, we can use them to show other equalities between scalars, and when we have those, we can then, in fact, derive the actual type mutation that we want to show. And as I said before, this only works in stable as a quantum mechanics. Right, so as Alex just said, um, I've removed some rules, I've just reordered the remaining ones um, to save space. Uh, but what we've still got is we've still got these um, convention that we have upside down versions for all our rules, and we also have the color swap versions, and we have the upside down and color swap versions. And in fact, um, because of the topology meta rule, uh, we don't really need the upside down versions for most rules because if we just send all the inputs into outputs and all the outputs into inputs, then by the topology rule, um, that gives us exactly the upside down version. And similarly, uh, the, um, the color change rule in the middle, um, because of the uh, property that Hadamard is self inverse, that tells us that the red and green spiders are very symmetrical and kind of indicates that we probably don't need most of the palace swap versions explicitly because we can probably just derive them. And so in fact we can just eliminate uh, this convention that we have the upside down and color swap versions um, and all we've needed to do to make it work out is add this extra rule about the red cow. Um, I'm going to get back to this later so in fact we can't, we haven't been able to show that this is necessary but we haven't been able to make the proofs work out otherwise this is one of those questions that's still open. Um, but for the time being, we've focused on keeping completeness uh, and sort of erred on the side of having too many rules rather than too few, uh, so that's why we've put it in. Um, next, I want to uh, look at the other meta rule, this only the topology matters rule, and that actually has two different parts. So on the one side, it expresses various properties of the underlying category. So this is the only time I'm actually talking about categories in, my, in this talk. Uh, so we have this underlying symmetric compact closed category, which basically means we have wire crossings that kind of behave in the expected way, so you can slide other maps through them. And we also have these caps and caps that also behave nicely, so they're symmetrical and they um, obey these snake rules, um, which uh, have been shown, like come out in Bob and Alex's talks previously. And the wire crossings are symmetric, uh, sorry, self inverse. But additionally, the topology meta rule also tells us other things about the properties of our components of diagrams. So it tells us that our spiders are also symmetric under switching any two legs. And they're also um, invariant under bending inputs into outputs, or conversely. And they tell us things like the fact that the Hadamard is um, uh, invariant under transposition. And um, in fact, the first uh, set of parts of the um, topology rule we can't get rid of because we do need these, this underlying categorical structure, otherwise the calculus isn't going to work. Um, but 
we don't necessarily need to assume all of those symmetry properties of our components. We um, might be able to derive some of those from the calculus. And so, in fact, um, so this is what we were left with on the previous slide um, after we eliminated the, um, uh, the rule that we have all the um, upside down and swap, color swap versions. And now, um, if I want to um, simplify this topology rule, I'm going to replace that with the, um, this rule that we only have the axioms of a compact closed category. And again, um, what we needed to do to make this work out is we needed to add this one extra rule, um, which if we have the topology rule, which tells us all those symmetry properties about being able to bend legs, that's just exactly equivalent to this first rule in the bottom row. But when we get rid of that, um, the two are no longer um, immediately the same. And again, we haven't been able to prove that we need to add this uh, new rule to make it work, but we haven't been able to make it work without it. So because we're being careful, we have put it in. And this is um, the set of rules um, that we're left with for the ZX calculus. This set is still complete. And we've gone from um, 12 rules, each of which had up to four different versions, to um, just nine rules, or I guess 10 if we count this as two versions. And none of them have come in any extra versions that aren't listed up here. So now um, I'm going to go the other direction, and I'm going to um, look at these rules in more detail and uh, figure out which ones we definitely need and which ones we may still be able to eliminate. Um, so first, um, the Euler decomposition of the Hadamard, um, that's one of the rules that wasn't in the original calculus, uh, but was later introduced by Ross and Simon. And when they introduced it, they did actually show that it was necessary, so it was independent of the then existing rule set. And the calculus has since been modified slightly, um, but by uh, modifying their proof a little bit, it does carry over to the new setting, so we definitely still need the Hadamard, um, the Euler decomposition. Now this uh, second rule, the um, inverse rule, um, it's the only rule that matches the empty diagram. Um, without it, we wouldn't be able to rewrite the, the empty diagram to anything, so we definitely need to keep that rule in the calculus. Um, this copy rule, um, the third one, um, that's the only rule that maps between a diagram where we have two connected outputs and a diagram where we have two disconnected outputs. So again, um, we need to keep that rule because otherwise we wouldn't be able to transform connected to disconnected outputs. Um, the next two rules, this color change and the spider rule, those are actually infinite families of rules because we're allowed to have arbitrarily many inputs and outputs, including zero. Um, so it's kind of difficult to say something about all the rules at the same time. Uh, but we, de we definitely need kind of an infinite subfamily of those rules in both cases because uh, the color change rule is the only rule um, in which we have red, uh, red spiders with four or more legs. Um, so we definitely need to keep those rules because otherwise we can't rewrite large red spiders. And similarly, um, the green spider fusion rule is the only rule that tells us how to transform spiders with four or more legs into diagrams that contain um, spiders with fewer legs. Uh, because we could use color change and kind of just go back and forth between red and green spiders, but that doesn't help us very much, so we definitely need the spider rule in addition. And finally, we can also show that we need this um, rule about zero diagrams. Um, as I told you previously, this um, green dot with a uh, face pi represents the number zero. And um, the proof for that um, is, again, fairly complicated, and it uses an alternative interpretation um, under which all the rules are sound, uh, meaning that they will true when translated um, to matrices under this new interpretation, except for the zero rule. And therefore, because um, our rewrite rules, um, if they are all sound, then anything that we can derive using those rules must also be sound under the interpretation. That tells us that we can't, rewrite, uh, can't derive the zero rule from the other rules of the calculus, and therefore it is necessary. Um, now we come to the arguments where we don't have sort of explicit ne necessity arguments. We can't say this rule we definitely need, uh, but we can say a few more things. And in fact, uh, we know that we need to have some um, rule that tells us how to map between wires and diagrams that contain spiders. Um, but we have two different rules that do that, and we don't yet know whether we need both of them or whether one of them would be sufficient, and if it's one, which one would be the one we need. So. Um, there's one open question in this area still, which is, do we need both of those rules, or is one of them enough? Uh, so just summarizing where we've got so far, so out of the nine rules that we have, um, these six um, that are currently um, uh, not blanked out are the ones that we definitely know that we need. And then there's these two where we know that we need one of them, um, possibly both, um, we can't quite say yet. The one rule that I haven't actually talked about yet is the bi-algebra rule, uh, which is what most of the previous talk was about, so um, this is clearly a very important rule. The 
the bi-algebra rule is the one that um, axiomatizes um, this notion of strongly complementary bases, which is very crucial in quantum theory. Um, so um, it's really vexing that so far we've not found a very satisfying way of proving that this rule is in fact necessary in our calculus. Uh, we do have some way of showing that it's necessary, but it involves a modification of the calculus, and is kind of it doesn't really use any of this properties related to strong complementarity, so yeah, it's, it's not very satisfying. Um, I'll quickly walk you through it. So again, um, this uh, proof involves constructing an alternative interpretation under which most of the rules are sound, but the bi-algebra and some of the others are not. And this time, um, we're using the same interpretation as usual on the green spiders and on wires and the empty diagram, but for each Hanamad node, um, we're adding a factor of minus i, um, just, a, yeah, uh, just a number, and for each red spider, uh, we add a factor of i for each of its legs. Uh, so in this case, if we're going from a green to a red spider and the color change rule, then the factors for the, for the red spider and for the Hadamards, they're just going to cancel out. So the color change rule still works. <coughs> and um, these are the rules that aren't sound under this new interpretation. So they're, um, the two sides of these equality are mapped to um, uh, different matrices, which now differ by some um, scalar factors. And one of them is the bi-algebra rule, which is the one that we'd like to show is necessary. Um, but we also have these three others, which is annoying, because we definitely already know that we need the scalar rule, um, uh, the inverse, scalar inverse rule, with, which has the empty diagram on one side. And we do know some stuff about the others as well. Um, so we can um, modify these other three rules in such a way that they are now sound under the interpretation that I laid out above. Um, but as you can see, they don't look very nice. So for the inverse rule, it's maybe not too bad. It's kind of gotten slightly more complicated, but no, too badly so. Um, but in the case of these other two rules, we suddenly have all those um, extra scalar diagrams, just numbers floating around, which aren't doing anything except making sure that um, the scalar factors work out. Um, so while this um, set of rules is still complete, it's kind of not very satisfying um, to do that, which is why we haven't just used this as the rule set that we're presenting here. And yeah, so we haven't found any other ways of um, arguing necessity for the bi-algebra, although we're fairly certain that it is necessary. <coughs> which is somewhat annoying. Right, so to conclude, um, so we've gone from 12 commonly used rewrite rules in the calculus, uh, each of which came in up to four versions, down to just nine, or I guess 10 if you count the, the two different versions of the same rule that we've kept. Uh, and this, this new rule set is still complete, despite having significantly fewer rules. Um, we no longer need to assume the symmetry properties of the spiders and the Hadamard node, like the fact that we can bend inputs into outputs or the fact that we can swap legs on our spiders. They just um, they are determined by the other properties of the language. Um, but some open questions still remain, uh, namely um, of several rules relating the wires to the categorical structure to the spiders. Uh, we don't yet know which or how many of them we need. And um, we can't show the necessity of the bi algebra except by using this weird modification of the rules, um, which just doesn't look very nice. Um, just as a kind of outlook, um, as I said, all I've talked about so far was just for stabilizer quantum mechanics. If we go outside of that, uh, we definitely know that we need more rules. Uh, we don't have a completeness result for um, general um, for the general ZX calculus. In fact, we know that the general calculus is incomplete and unlikely to be completable by just some finite new rule set. But even for Clifford plus T, um, which is the case that has been looked at a little bit, uh, we know that um, we need at least the supplementary rule, um, which was proved by my co-workers. And um, as I said, this, um, the pi commutation rule, which we managed to eliminate within stabilizer quantum mechanics, is probably still needed once we go outside stabilizers. And therefore, there's still quite a lot of open questions in this area. If you have any suggestions for what to do, please do tell me. Otherwise, thank you. Thank you very much. states are either um, copyable states of that color, 
or they are the y basis states which you can rewrite into the other color up to a phase. And that is what lets you um, derive this rule. As I said, we have to do that on a case by case basis. Um, so the, the and the, the, you mean pi copy? Oh. Ah, right. Uh, that relies on the fact that you can write pi copy in a phase free form as a, um, a spider with a um, loop that has a Hadamard in it. And then um, using various other things um, that, yeah, all the rules basically that don't involve phases. Um, in the back? Yeah. yeah. Um, when you showed the argument for the necessity of the biological rule, you defined this new interpretation. Is that related to swapping the x observable for the y observable, keeping the z fixed? Is that something that's similar? Because that's where you would expect a lot uh, of things to be similar. But yeah, it's not quite the same thing because uh, we do want to keep the Hadamard being um, uh, symmetric and self inverse. Uh, which it's not if you have the y basis. Uh, so it's not as straightforward as just swapping the x and the y basis, unfortunately, because then, yeah, many of the nice properties um, that the Hadamard has get lost. Yeah, Alex, the last you had another question. Yeah, another question is <laughs> boring question. So. Okay. You? I oh, yeah, uh, Ross, yeah. Were you just assuming by definition that the green spider with one in and one out was the same as an empty one? Uh, no, that follows from the cup rule that we did assume and the spider rules. Oh, yeah, stupid uh, joke. Uh, <laughs> the biodegra rule was not there from the start okay. because we had this theorem that the biodegra rule could be derived from the hot flower under mild assumptions which were actually equivalent to the power of the world. Right, but we don't have the hot floor either, so... So, so, so nobody should ever go to look, look at the first page on ZX, because it has this horrible mistake. No, it's no mistake, it's triviality. Anyone else? Yes. So, some of your rules are really an infinite family of rules. Yes. Could you maybe get rid of some of your extra rules by combining them into some infinite um, family that contains both of them? Possibly. So you can definitely combine the copy rule and the bi-algebra rule. Yeah. And I guess in that case, the kind of necessity of the copy rule sort of in a way covers <laughs> the biological rule, but not in a very nice way because it's just one special case that's necessary, yeah. whereas with the current infinite families, we have most of the cases are necessary. It's just okay. a few special cases where our necessity argument doesn't hold.